Hey guys, my name's Steven. Welcome to my channel. This right here is my 2023 Volkswagen Golf R. Uh, I'll give you a little walk around tour, trim level, color, uh, what I like about it, what I don't like about it, why I chose this over some of its competitors, uh, where, what vehicles I came from, etc., etc. But first, um, what I intend to do with this channel, I really don't know. Just have some fun with it. Point of view driving videos, any modifications I do to this vehicle, I'll include you guys in on that as well. And I'm just hoping that you guys have just as much fun watching the videos I create as I have creating them. So let's go. 2023 Volkswagen Golf R. This is finished in pure white. It has a DSG transmission. More on that in a moment. Uh, and though it is a 2023 model, it is not a 20th anniversary edition, which I'm fine with, and I'll go over that as well. Uh, but first things first, let's go over the history briefly of the Golf R and the Golf. So this is the eighth generation of the Golf, hence Mark 8. Uh, the Golf has always been a economy hatchback uh, dating back to the 70s. Uh, the R badge came out in the fourth generation, otherwise known as the Mark IV. That was back in 2003, hence why a 2023 model has a 20th anniversary edition um the first two generations the so mark 4 and mark 5 of the golf r were called the r32 they had a vr6 engine um, with all-wheel drive mark 6 mark 7 and mark 8 all come with a two liter four cylinder turbocharged motor with again all-wheel drive there are quite a few differences here um this latest model has the fourth generation of the EA888 um, iron block forged crankshaft four cylinder turbo. Um, it is overbuilt, responds tremendously well to uh, bolt ons and software tunes, um, and are known to hold quite a bit of power. Um, relative to what it is, it's a two liter turbo. Um, because they're all-wheel drive, they tend to launch very well. Um, they made some key differences to the all-wheel drive system in the Mark 8. Whereas before, it was a Haldex unit or Haldex version of all-wheel drive. Um, it would just send, it would be front-wheel drive uh, most of the time whenever it detected slip or needed to send power to the rear, it would send 50 or up to 50% to the rear. And that's it. Um, they drove very, very well. I had a Mark 7.5, so a 2019 Golf R. Drove extremely well, but um, it did feel front wheel drive. Don't get me wrong, so does this, but just not quite as much. It's a lot happier in corners um, because it has what's called a Magna rear differential now. So same thing, front biased but it sends 50% to the rear when needed. And of that 50%, it could send 100% of the available torque to either left or right rear wheel. So it helps you power out of corners. At times, on corner entry, it can get, uh, you can feel the, the back end wiggle and, and try to come out. It's, uh, it's pretty fun. Anywho, I'm getting way ahead of myself. Why I went with DSG? The manual is fun, it really is. But the DSG is what this vehicle, this vehicle has been centered around. It was engineered with the DSG in mind. In fact, in Europe, you can't even get a manual transmission in this vehicle at all. The manual is North America only. In addition to that, the manual in these cars is a carryover from the last gen. And uh, I just didn't want to deal with the clutch issues that, or the, the weak clutch and all of that because I, I, I will most likely be tuning this vehicle in the future, maybe. Um, I did tune my previous vehicle, my previous Golf R, which was also a DSG. It, uh, it kind of gives it a mini GTR vibe about it, and I like that. Um, of course, the manual will be uh, more, you know, involving, more engaging. Uh, don't get me wrong, they're fun, but uh, I, I just wanted the vehicle in the uh, specification that it was intended to be 
from the factory. And just like that, it's a few months later, I have a few thousand kilometers more on the odometer. The temperature outside is in the single digits and I have my winter set up here. So I have 18 inch Pretoria wheels. These are OEM Volkswagen wheels, um, originally found on the Mark 7 Golf R and some of the GTIs as well. Um, I have uh, 235, 40 Continental Ice Contact Extreme winter tires. These were apparently designed in Canada. So I'm excited to see how these uh, handle the snow. And I'm also excited to see how this vehicle handles the snow. I mean, it has a new rear differential now. It's pretty fun. I have to say it's a totally different, totally different experience from the Mark 7. Um, it just feels a lot more alive, a lot more eager. Um, and in the snow, it's going to be a blast. Uh, it even has a dedicated mode, a driving mode, which I'll get into, get to in a moment, uh, called drift mode. And that's what really keeps that rear diff working. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Um, carry on with my walk around tour. Um, I'm not going to show you the back end right now, or you know what? Let's let's go ahead and do it. So sorry for the mess. Got a few belongings here in my winter coat, but uh, back here, uh, both seats are, you know, pulled back quite a bit. However, there is ample room for uh, I would say two adults. Uh, seats back here are heated, and you have your own dedicated uh, climate control. So it's tri-zone. Try to find that in any comparable vehicle. You can't. Uh, you have USB C's down below and AC vents. Ambient lighting comes back here as well, along the rear doors, as well as the fronts and a dash. First thing you notice, it's very simple in here, in a good way. It's minimalist. Um, up front, straight ahead, you have a digital H cluster. It's highly configurable. Um, you have different different modes here. So you have one with the tachometer. This this is the default mode for Nurburgring mode and uh, race mode. So it automatically puts you into into that. You have one that um, just looks like a standard analog gauge cluster. This is sort of like Audi's. Um, uh, what's it called? Audi's driving cockpit anyway um, then you have this this looks very blank right now but if you have all the driving assistance on like adaptive cruise lane keep assist it will show lanes it will show other drivers on the road it's pretty cool this is a very simplified form this is my personal favorite large tachometer speedo in the middle and that's that these two gauges on the sides are customizable as well I usually have it as fuel economy on this side, average fuel economy, and on this side I like to have my my uh, temperature gauges going, and it's good. You have your DSG transmission temperature gauge, your oil temperature gauge, and coolant. Uh, pay no attention to this, 10.2 liters per hundred kilometers. I didn't fill up too long ago, and it's, that's just since fuel uh, refuel. Um, I've been driving a little bit. A little harder long term I'm averaging 9.5 i have seen as low as 7.6 liters per hundred kilometers uh which is awesome anyway let's put this back to refill um besides that or to the right of that you have this this is the center of a whole whack of controversy uh regarding this vehicle um this in addition to the lack of buttons in here. As an owner, um, I gotta say it's not that bad. And of course I'm gonna say that, I own this vehicle, but you do get used to it. You can set shortcuts, you can configure this however you like. Um, it's very intuitive uh, once you learn where everything is. Um, it's very fast to respond. The graphics are awesome. Um, the displays are nice and bright. You get a ton of information here. Um, you can configure everything. You can reorder all these um, different icons. You can configure this screen to choose what it displays. Same with this. Um, yeah, 
you can add extra pages as well uh, the climate control you have so you have these right here and you have your volume control right here if you hit this there you go there's your climate controls on fan speed right different modes you can also use the voice command I, I never use it or you can go to smart climate and there's different modes here if you just want a quick you know um, whether it's defogging windows warming up your feet warming up your hands cooling your feet blah 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 uh, and then you have your, your rear controls as well um, but yeah as far as features go it's great this steering wheel is very high quality the paddles are awesome it's a huge upgrade from the previous Golf R uh, but yeah the steering wheel feels great in your hands it is also heated all around has nice blue stitching it just yeah it's a huge upgrade um, beyond that the seats are heated just like the previous Golf R but they're also cooled which is great um, straight ahead not sure if the camera's gonna pick it up but I have a heads-up display up above my head Never an option in the Mark 7 Golf R, at least here in North America. I have a large sunroof. They call it a panoramic sunroof. I don't call this a panoramic sunroof. Uh, but yeah, it's very large. It's great. Um, what else can I tell you? Yeah, wireless charger down here. USB-C's over here. Um, yeah. Let's get driving. Oh yeah, audio system. It has a nine speaker, I believe. Harman Kardon audio system. Um, I think it's a very clear base was a little bit la little lacking so I end ended up installing the subwoofer back back there it's a JL audio 10w6 in a sealed enclosure uh, but yeah you like as far as mids and highs it's great you have good DSB settings you have surround sound you can fo focus a sound amongst all the drivers or just the two fronts or just the driver itself then you have an equalizer as well with different presets um, I think it sounds great but uh, yeah, let's go for a short ride here. So right now, I should probably show you this. It's empty parking lot, so we're good. Uh, you have comfort mode, right? That, you know, lightens up the steering, softens up the suspension, quiets down the, um, the, the exhaust as well as the sound dactor. Uh, so it does pump in noise, uh, engine noise. It's not offensive whatsoever. Uh, but yeah, that turns everything down, right? Uh, sport mode, that's your default. Every time you start up the vehicle, it will be in sport mode. Um, yeah, steering is kind of in the middle. It's not too heavy, not too light. Suspension as well. And then you have a race mode. That stiffens everything up. It, it uh, raises the idle, puts you into this mode quickens this is the uh, transmission and then you have after that you have drift mode which gives you a disclaimer here are you sure you want to use it yes I do that turns off ESC or it turns into um, ESC sports you have Nurburgring mode this stiffens up everything makes it super aggressive except for the suspension so it can soak up bumps at high speeds then you have custom mode whoops custom here and with this you can adjust everything you have I believe 15 settings or different steps for the suspension yes you have there's your comfort sport and race but you can make it even softer in comfort or even stiffer than race steering as well comfort sport race drivetrain so how aggressively it's it sends power to the rear engine sound so you have comfort which is super quiet sport which is standard uh, race opens up the valves in the exhaust. Yes, it is a valved exhaust from the factory and you have pure as well uh, I think race pumps in audio as well as opens up the back exhaust valves whereas pure It shuts off the pumped in audio pumped in engine sound and then just um, Keeps it purely exhaust sound uh, Adaptive cruise control you can also adjust how aggressive that is and light assist so this has adaptive light lighting so um, I don't believe, like on the Mark 7, the actual projectors, I believe, would would turn with the wheel. Uh, with this, it's full LED lighting up front, so I think it just, I, I don't know, it does some crazy magic, but it works awesome. Um, 
So I'm gonna go ahead and keep it in sport mode. Um, I also wanna show you this. Drop down menu, traction control, and you can turn to ESC uh, sport or ESC off. It's that simple. Yes, it's not quite as simple as a button down here like on the Mark 7. However, to turn it, the Mark 7 completely off, you have to hold down the button for about 10 seconds and then it would do so. So this is actually a little bit quicker if you think about it that way. Um, I can choose what's here. I can adjust all this. I, these are shortcuts that I put here. Um, so again, it's the infotainment system. At first, it's very daunting, but uh, once you get used to it, it's, yeah, it's, it's great. I think. Um, anywho. So we're in sport. Heat steering wheel's on. I'll put the ESC system back on as well. Here's your shifter. So you have reverse. Here's your backup camera. You have neutral. And you have drive. And if you hit it back again, it puts in the S. So sport mode holds the revs a little bit longer and speeds up the shifts. But I'll keep it in drive for now. So I've been living with this vehicle for, let's see, it's November, maybe six months now. Wow, time flies. I have just over 11,000 kilometers on it. And it's been great. No issues whatsoever. Knock on wood. Um, yeah. I haven't done any mods aside from the subwoofer in the back and the intake under the hood. Um, I am planning on tuning this when a tune becomes available. I should probably clarify a bit. There are ECU tunes, so engine tunes, available for this vehicle. But 2023s and some late 2022s as well, and this would also apply to 24s, um, with the DSG transmission, the software is still locked. So tuners are still working to unlock it and therefore uh, enable you to tune that as well. So right now the tune, the, the engine tunes that are available for this are limited by torque. Um, so it's a low torque file. Uh, once they unlock the, the transmission tunes, uh, you'll get your full blown um, power and capability. But yeah, that's that's a huge limiting factor at the moment in, the, in this uh, in the tuning world for Mark Seven, Mark Eights. So this is a type of car where you can drive it normally, and you wouldn't know if you had a passenger in it. They would have no idea what it's capable of. Uh, that's capable of, you know, four second, maybe four and a half second, zero to sixties stock, twelve second quarter miles stock. Uh, capable of 168 miles per hour again stock it's crazy in a little in a hatchback like this as far as other features go uh, it has adaptive cruise it's got blind spot monitoring it's got uh, forward collision warning um, and emergency braking it's got a backup camera it's got lane keep assist yeah uh, parking sensors front and rear I think it hurt me parking sensors front and rear that might be a little on the front sensor um, it even has parallel and perpendicular parking assist I've never used it personally I don't trust it in any vehicle whatsoever um, just a little bit too far gone for me but these are features you're not going to find on some of the competitors or any of the competitors direct competitors um, I'm talking hatchbacks hot hatches uh, most obvious competitors to this Honda Civic Type R, Acura Integra Type S, the Toyota GR Corolla. Um, okay, so that Honda and Acura didn't really consider them. I've driven the old generation Civic Type R, the FK8. I thought it was awesome, but I mean, the winter time. Yes, you can get around with winter tires on the front, but you're not gonna have fun um, in the winter. And here in Calgary, six months out of the year, it's cold. It's it's snowy. So that was a no-go. The Integra Type S, I was hoping that would come with all-wheel drive, but it just seems to be a Civic Type R with the edges rounded off a little bit. So that was a no-go. Um, neither of those are gonna be as feature-rich as this. Um, they're not gonna be as usable uh, on a daily 
basis um, they're gonna have if you're looking for a manual transmission I can almost guarantee you the six-speed manual and those are gonna be superior to to what Volkswagen puts in these um, but those don't have a dual clutch or automatic option I was open to manual like I mentioned but yeah I think these cars are meant to uh, to have the DSG if it was a GTI if I was buying a GTI I'd probably get a manual but this car was designed from the ground up with the DSG. So, there we are. Uh, anyway, and then the GR Corolla, another fun car, but that's gonna be nowhere near as refined as this. It's not gonna have any of the features. The room inside is not gonna be, uh, it's not gonna be as roomy. It's, they're not as efficient with the room. The, the cargo area on those, it's a lot tinier than this. Uh, the comfort, the noise levels, everything. It's just a totally different ball game. That's fine if you're looking for that. If you're not looking for, um, you know, a comfortable daily driver, something that can double up as, you know, almost, this, this can play the part of a small premium car, like a, maybe a three series, two series, uh, E-Class, CLA class, uh, A3, you know, those type of cars. This can play that role just as well in comfort mode, or almost as well. And it has all, like most of the features. Those other cars will not. Um, so this has that Jekyll and Hyde that those cars simply don't. Let's go ahead and throw it into special so that's Nurburgring mode as you saw if you're manually overriding the transmission so if you're manually changing and it's it says m plus uh it will hold gears it won't automatically up upshift uh in any other mode aside from Nurburgring mode um it will auto shift auto upshift this you can bounce off the limiter i'll bring up the gauge cluster here or the torque distribution right there really if you're driving aggressively, you're not going to be staring at that. But in this case, when I rewatch this video, I'll be able to take a look here. So let's go around. Um, as far as speed goes, this is just about as quick as my stage one plus mark seven and a half go far it was um i have to do a little bit of testing a little bit more testing but at a higher uh density altitude so da with my draggy which is located right here in this perfectly sized slot um i've gotten similar acceleration results um so that's pretty impressive so in addition to getting a stage one tune i'll probably do the same thing stage one plus so stage one plus just means 93 octane i'll probably be going with unitronic just like my last call far um just a big name great reputation uh in my experience great customer service as well um yeah i'll probably be doing that stage one plus ecu tune stage one tcu tune try to find somewhere where I can do a little little pull no one around and maybe just maybe if I find the right spot I can show you launch control so I do want to demonstrate something from the factory, these cars have subtle, but they're there, uh, pops and bangs. The trick is to get the RPM up to about three and a half, four thousand 4,000 RPM. And then let off the gas, and you'll hear it. I don't want to be a menace to society here. <laughs> so we'll pick our spot, and I want to do it somewhere where it's safe. Ooh, M2. He ignored me. <laughs> I 
Not sure if the camera's picking up. I had traction control on there. I'm not sure if it was pulling power, but yeah. 